but before we start, let me have uh, some short introduction of Professor Xiao Gang Wen. He has completed his PhD in Princeton University in 1987. Since then, he has moved around several uh, distinguished uh, research institute. Uh, among some of them, he went to, uh, wait a minute, uh, uh, ITP, Institute of Theoretical Physics at uh, UC Santa Barbara. And then he also, after that, he also spent uh, two years in IAS in Princeton again. And he become a faculty member in MIT and he is still uh, uh, keeping his, his position in MIT. Uh, in particular, he is he's, uh, appointed as a special chair professor at MIT. Uh, Cecil Ida Green, professor of physics at MIT. And uh, he, uh, he has also received uh, several important prize and award. Uh, among some of them, uh, let me read uh, some of them. Uh, he has received the Dirac Medal at ICTP in 2018. And he also was appointed as member of National Academy of Science uh, in 2018. And he has received the famous Berkeley Prize also 2017 and, and so on. Uh, most importantly, uh, he, he was selected as a Benjamin Lee Professorship Award uh, from APCTP, our center this year. And uh, because of that, he will come to Korea and visit our center uh, in the next month, starting October 11 to October 19. So basically he will have, you will have enough time to discuss with him in next month. And uh, in any case, today he will give us a uh, Colloquium talk topo about topological order and non abelian statistics. So let us welcome Professor Xiao Gang Wen. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. And, uh, you know, I'm very looking forward to uh, visiting uh, Korea and your institution. And uh, so today's talk maybe can be viewed as a maybe appetizer for next month's uh, a series of lecture. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, topology order and non abelian statistics. So essentially, topology order is, a, is some kind of a many body entanglement, and non abelian statistics is actually is a fractionalized degree freedom. And uh, so I will try to explain uh, these uh, two notions and to see how, why these two notions are very much uh, related. So we know that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, all kinds of materials uh, in our world. And we try to understand why the material is so rich. And uh, so uh, uh, in, the, uh, in middle school, we learned that uh, there is a four state matter, like a solid, a liquid, gas, and a plasma. But however, in university, uh, we find actually there's a much more uh, different kind of state matter. So it is Landau who point out that uh, uh, the very rich form of matter coming from this uh, a very rich type of organization. So the atom can organize uh, in many different patterns. And uh, the reason we have a, a, a different order or different organization really because uh, those different order have a different symmetry or different symmetry breaking. So therefore a symmetry breaking play a very important role in our understanding of all different organization, uh, uh, different order in the material. Okay. However, uh, 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 maybe around 30 years ago, uh, we start to see some new kind of thing beyond the Landau's picture. Uh, we have this, uh, uh, there's a discovery of a high TC superconductor. And uh, there's a particular theory for high TC superconductor is called a spin liquid theory. Uh, in which it will assume that electron 
somehow split into a whole long and a spin long. And the whole long carry charge one and the spin zero is a boson. A spin long carry charge zero spin one half is a fermion. So some kind of very strange uh, theory. And then because the whole long carry charge and is a boson, then the whole long condensation would give rise to superconductivity. So that's a, that's a wonderful mechanism for high TC uh, superconductor. And uh, and so 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 then this uh, this uh, this kind of spin liquid would be kind of a very interesting uh, state of matter state of organization, and uh, it may have this uh, fractionalization. So at that time we are thinking about how to characterize this uh, spin liquid. So what kind of order this spin liquid have? So yeah, we are still thinking about the symmetry breaking. So we say okay, uh, there is other parameter like this three spin uh, product. Uh, which can be non-zero uh, even uh, in the spin disordered states, but this state break time reversal symmetry. So we say, okay, maybe spin liquid is a state which break time reversal symmetry and the parity symmetry, and that's what gave rise to this uh, fractionalization. So at that time, you're thinking along uh, this direction. But however, uh, uh, very soon we find that uh, actually uh, for the same other parameter, uh, we can have a uh, many different uh, uh, we have several different spin liquid for the same order parameter. And this different spin liquid have a different property of the uh, of a whole on spin on. This spin on whole on may sometimes carry uh, Fermi statistics, sometimes carry uh, fractional statistics, etc. So there's different kinds of spin liquid. So this is kind of puzzle. So the, the things, this symmetry breaking order parameter cannot fully characterize this uh, uh, spin liquid. And, uh, and then uh, we also, uh, at that time, we also see there is a, a fraction of quantum power states. Uh, in the quantum power state is formed by electron uh, at the surface of a semiconductor and the very strong magnetic field. And uh, for this two dimensional electron gas, you can measure the hall conductance. And they find that there's a lot of very precisely quantized plateaus. Each plateau seems to uh, uh, correspond to a certain organization of electron. And then we try to wonder uh, why, what is the order in this organization? Uh, how this plateau was uh, formed? What is the organization uh, which gave rise to this uh, quantized uh, plateau? And here again, uh, we have a similar uh, issue uh, because uh, those material uh, are, are not very pure, can have, a, can have impurities, but the impurity do not affect the accuracy of this uh, quantization plateau. And so it looks like whatever organization it has, it's immune from impurity. But when you have impurity, the system have no symmetry. So no symmetry breaking. So again, it looks like using symmetry breaking, a different symmetry breaking pattern to characterize different plateau, also not reasonable. So at that time, uh, uh, we kind of propose that maybe uh, this kind of spin liquid or this quantum Hall state have a new kind of order beyond uh, this Landau symmetry breaking order. This new kind of order is called a topology order. But uh, certainly when you propose a new concept like a topology order, you have to define, you have to define it. But actually in physics, a physical concept really defined by experiments. So you have to really propose some kind of measurable quantity, some experiments which can distinguish different topology order or measure different topology order. Uh, for example, uh, like a crystal order is measured by the X-ray uh, experiments. So different X-ray scattering pattern, it can, measure, it can determine the different crystal order. Similarly, the superfluid order is uh, de defined via this zero viscosity and this quantization of vorticity. So do we have something similar, which is measurable? which allow us to define this notion of a topologic order. Okay, so the problem we are facing is that we have this uh, many body wave function. Uh, they are strongly correlated system uh, with a wave function of many, many uh, uh, variables. So it's uh, hard to see what's in this, what is organization inside this uh, uh, wave function. So at that time, uh, uh, one idea is that uh, we just put this system, put this wave function on the sphere or on the torus or on the genus to remain surface, etc. Then what do you measure? 
we measure ground state degeneracy. And uh, so uh, because at that time, uh, uh, we have an effective uh, theory of these uh, quantum Hall states. So from there, we realized that uh, uh, putting this uh, uh, many body wave function on different uh, Riemann surface can lead to this uh, uh, different uh, 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 degeneracy. So we have a topology dependent ground state degeneracy. So that's something special. So then, uh, so that's that's uh, uh, so this uh, this quantity kind of in some sense uh, define the topological order. Uh, maybe some yeah. stupid question. Also, yeah, I learned. I mean type of classification. So how can you think this idea? Sorry for this stupid question. Uh, yeah, what is the origin of, yeah? But this is completely different from... Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the thing that, uh, okay. Uh, you know, this, uh, uh, there, there's, there, there, there are several things. Uh, one thing is that uh, this, uh, 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 this, uh, 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 you know, we know that uh, these uh, quantum Hall states have a strong, very strong uh, correlation, and uh, so since the symmetry is a, uh, is not way to go. It's it's not really symmetry determined. It's not all the parameters. So one need to uh, try to find something uh, different. You know, at that time, uh, uh, you know, because before I studied this uh, 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 spin liquid and the quantum Hall state. I was working on uh, string theory. And uh, so uh, in string theory, the conformal theory, people usually put a, a conformal theory on a torus. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the torus may have given a shape and et cetera. Uh, so, uh, so this kind of thing uh, uh, kind of motivates me to, to put a quantum wave function on, on the torus and to see, uh, to see their, uh, their degeneracy. But when you put it on a torus, it's natural to try to put on genius two remain surface on some other other torus. Then you find a, 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 a something uh, a kind of different. So, so basically, uh, yeah, basically you expect when you put such many body wave function on a some Riemann Riemann surface, then you will get non-trivial ground state degeneracy. You will expect at that time it's not clear, but the, as a try, because uh, if all the parameter does not work, and uh, so so putting system on the on the on the space with different topology is maybe some maybe some fun thing to try. You know, that's a, a mm -hmm. just some different just 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 different way to to try. Uh, but then then you find that there's a, 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 a there's a there's degeneracy. But actually, uh, uh, before. Uh, there's a there's a there's a there's a there's an argument, you know. People know that uh, on the sphere there's no ground state degeneracy, on the torus there's a ground state degeneracy, and uh, 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 so so there's a there's some puzzle and debate. So what's going on uh, 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 for this case? I see. And, uh, okay. Yeah. So 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 you know, so in the, in the quantum matter community, there's uh, already uh, uh, some uh, thinking, and. Uh, uh, but but uh, but actually, if you put this uh, on the, all the Riemann surface, you can see this uh, ground state DNS have this uh, pattern. It really depends on topology, so it's not accident. It's not something, uh, uh, some some random number. So uh, uh, so this this uh, pattern, that this uh, topology dependent uh, ground state DNS seems to uh, tell us something. So we call that topology order. So in some sense, that is a, a, a that is a, a kind of motivation. Yeah, I I have also short question. So this yeah. ground state de de degeneracy pattern works with uh, any insulating insulating wave function or exactly it it's a it's a work with a, any insulating function insulating uh, so called the gap states. I see. You can put a, any gap state on space with different topology. And the study whether their ground state dependency depend on topology or not, and I what see. kind of dependence do you have? So that tell us something. If they have some special dependence, that seems tell us something. This is something. So what is this something? So that is a that is a journey. So I we see. try to understand what is this something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are really uh, uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, that, that's what the, what, 
that's really at the beginning there's a lot of puzzle a lot of confusion <laughs> all right thank you yeah and uh, so 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 here this really really about this uh, some 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 kind of confusion or some puzzle at that time so usually we know that the degeneracy come from the symmetry for example when you have su2 rotation symmetry you have a degeneracy mm -hmm. but actually uh, for this kind of degeneracy they're not come from symmetry because uh, uh, we try to say those degeneracy uh, exist even for system without any symmetry with impurity. Mm -hmm. So this is not really a symmetry uh, related. And also uh, another uh, uh, puzzle is that, uh, you know, using ground state degeneracy to describe a bulk phase of a thermodynamic phase looks very strange because uh, the ground state degeneracy like a boundary condition is a property of a boundary condition. And the thermodynamical phase is a bulk relation. Mm -hmm. So there's a so so this topology which is depend on the degenerate depend on the boundary condition seems not related to the bulk thermodynamical phase. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that is a, a that's so how how one argue? Yeah, it, it, it's a it is a, it's a it's a thermodynamical property. It is bulk property, not just a boundary condition property. Okay. So what the convince us uh, is uh, in the uh, in the following study is that uh, uh, we show that uh, uh, this ground state degeneracy is actually robust against any local perturbation in the bulk. So you can add impurity, you can add some small change to the Hamiltonian in the bulk, and this degeneracy do not do not change due to some uh, uh, there, there are some for quantum power states and also for the uh, for uh, for the, for the chiral spin liquid states there are some argument. Uh, it's not rigorous proof, but there's a physical argument to show that uh, this uh, ground state do not depend on any impurity. And uh, then the degeneracy can change only when you have a large perturbation, when you do the large perturbation, and which close the energy gap. When you close the energy gap, the degeneracy can change, just like here. Or maybe you have first order phase transition, you know, uh, degeneracy can change. You know, we cannot have a this situation that degeneracy suddenly change without uh, uh, without closing energy gap. So so this uh, so this kind of analysis uh, kind of uh, convinced us. Yeah, this ground state energy is uh, something reflect a bulk property, reflect thermodynamical property, and it should be used as a quantum number uh, to characterize the bulk phase. So that's basically a uh, uh, kind of established that. Uh, yeah, uh, we have this uh, 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 topological order from a uh, uh, new kind of order from ground state degeneracy. So we call this topological degeneracy because it's robust against any uh, impurity perturbation. Okay. So, uh, so when, what is the uh, what is the origin of this uh, degeneracy? You know. You know, at that time we just saw, oh, this we have we have some kind of degeneracy, topological degeneracy, but where it come from? How to understand them? So uh, many years later, uh, uh, we we discovered this uh, topological entanglement entropy, and which led us to think about the long range quantum entanglement. Okay, then it turns out that uh, this uh, topological degeneracy or this topological order really come from this uh, long range uh, quantum entanglement. You know, when we first studied topology in 1989, at that time, quantum computer is not very popular. So the uh, entanglement is also not uh, very popular. But in 1995 also, the quantum information science take off. Then people start to thinking about the quantum information, quantum entanglement. Then, then fortunately, yeah, also maybe coincidentally, coincidentally uh, this topology order happened to be very strongly related uh, to this entanglement, in particular, it's a many body entanglement, entanglement among many, many things, and also long range entanglement. So this is just uh, some uh, history. So let me try to explain uh, uh, what is the entanglement and why entanglement and the ground state degeneracy are uh, related. And uh, so first, entanglement have very, very special property that if you know every part, you still do not know whole. So knowing every part do not imply you know the whole thing. So that is a very special feature of entanglement. 
So let's give the example uh, uh, for this. Uh, knowing every path, you still do not know how. Let's consider uh, two spin states. Uh, you have high state up, up, plus, down, down, or up, up, minus, down, down. So this is, you have two different wave function. Okay. So this wave function can be written as a, uh, this uh, wave function with two variable, m1, m2. m1, m2 just can be up or down, each, each of them. Okay, then for this pure state, we can construct a two uh, uh, in time, uh, uh, this uh, density, density matrix. This uh, dense, whole density matrix for the pure states. Okay, and in terms of matrix element, you know, density matrix uh, labeled by M1, M2 is a column index, uh, M1 prime, M2 prime is a, a row index, and etc. Okay, so, so that's a whole. Then what is the part? The part is that we just look at one spin and ignore other spin. So how do you look at the one spin and ignore other spin? It's we trace. We look at, uh, we, tra we trace, we look at the part. What you do is that uh, we trace the whole, we trace out the other parts uh, among this uh, whole density matrix. So mathematically that means uh, for this density matrix, we have this uh, four index We sum over this M2. So we don't look at M2, just trace out M2. Then we get density matrix only M1, M1 prime. So that's, a, us, that's only density matrix for first spin. Then we find that uh, for both of these states, the, these uh, density states for the first spin is the same. They have this diagonal form. So this is, this is some simple example and a simple concrete calculation. You can see that uh, knowing density matrix of, uh, of parts cannot distinguish the density matrix of a whole. Yeah. And this is really a character of entanglement. Entanglement have this, uh, have this character. And then certainly uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in topology order, you know, it's a, the, the Hamiltonian is a, is, a, is a local Hamiltonian, have a local interaction. So each Hamiltonian term can only see a small part. And uh, if you know every small part, and knowing the whole small part, you still don't know the total wave function. And uh, so it is uh, this entanglement have this property, this uh, knowing every part, like uh, knowing every local Hamiltonian, uh, you still don't know the whole wave function. So that's led to the uh, topological degeneracy. So actually uh, this kind of uh, phenomena, this entanglement and the knowing every part still do not, do not know whole, gave rise to this tableau degeneracy and also gave rise to this uh, NAB in statistics uh, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the same reason. Okay, so now let's uh, try to explain what is entanglement. Okay, let's just go through some very simple example. You know, we have spin up, spin down. This is the product state. So that means uh, uh, it's not, not entangled. And uh, now this one is entangled. We have uh, up, down, plus, down, up. Then you may have a more entangled, it says up, up, plus down, down, plus up, down, plus down, up. But then if you think a little more carefully, you find this one actually is not entangled. This is an up, down, tensor product with a up, and down. So actually it's a, it's a spin, horizontal spin, uh, two horizontal spin, spin X and spin X. So this is actually unentangled. So actually entanglement is a little bit uh, non-trivial. Uh, we have to uh, do a little bit of work to see whether they are entangled or not entangled. And usually you can use entanglement entropy, entanglement entropy to determine. In condensed matter, we encounter a lot of uh, uh, state of matter, like this antiferromagnetic states, spin up and down, up and down. But this up and down, up and down is unentangled. And we can give some example of entangled uh, uh, condensed matter states, which is like a, a spin single dimer. This up and down minus down up, they form a spin single dimer. And spin single dimer uh, form this uh, uh, 1D spin chain. So this one is entangled uh, because this uh, up and down, uh, these two spin are entangled. But uh, however, if you think a little bit uh, carefully, you say we can, we can regroup, we can redefine the lattice side. We can say this uh, pair of lattice side is a uh, one side. So these two, this pair is a uh, one side. Then, then this one actually is uh, unentangled. So in some sense, uh, this example, dimer state is so-called a short ring entangled. So there's a local entanglement, but then over long distance, there's a not really entangled. So through this example, uh, we discuss some kind of a short ring entangled states. 
Okay. And uh, so usually uh, the, the, the familiar order actually like a crystal, ferromagnets, antiferromagnets, they, are, they kind of, uh, they all shorter and entangled. And this new topological order is something do not looks like this. It's a long entangled. Okay. So what is long entanglement looks like? Okay. So here's a, a way uh, to get long entanglement. So we know that uh, we can consider a superposition of all spin up and down configuration, up and down, up and down. If you sum all configuration, we actually get unentangled states of a spin all in X direction. Okay. So this is not what we want. But this, this example gave us idea. We should not, we should do some superposition, but we should not overdo it. We do a partial sum. We don't sum over all configuration. We sum over part of a configuration. So one idea is a sum over a subset of a spin configuration is to, to consider spin up as a background and consider spin down from this continuous loop. We call the string. Then we sum over, we sum over these loops formed by down spins. So that is the idea. So in this way, we don't sum over everything and we do sum over many things. So maybe this superposition of the loop would give rise to the uh, uh, long range entanglement. And maybe these states have a topology order. And actually here we have a, a two possible superposition. One is a super, just a superposition with the same weight, same coefficient, another superposition of loops. But with coefficient plus minus one, depending on you have even number of loop or odd number of loops. And you can have these two many body wave function and these two may make, make give rise to a different laundry entanglement. So this again, this is a guess. This is a kind of proposal. Okay. So, so this kind of a, a, a loop liquid is like a dancing party. So every spin are kind of a, a have quantum fluctuations kind of dancing around each other. Okay. But the however, they follow certain dancing rules. Okay. And those rules are local rules because those rules are impl implemented by, by local interaction. So they are local rules. Okay. So first rule is that uh, this down spin hold the hand. They form this, uh, 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 form this uh, a string with no, with no open end. So open end would cause big energy. So the down spin want to form a closed loops. So that's a one rule. Another rule is that otherwise this, is, this string can fluctuate arbitrarily. For example, the string can change its shape without any penalty. So therefore the ground state wave function uh, 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 will have same amplitude for different shape of a, of a string. So string can fluctuate with arbitrary shape. Not only they can, they can fluctuate with arbitrary shape, they can also reconnect you know, this kind of configuration, they can join and reconnect that uh, became this kind of configuration. So this two, this two dancing rule would ensure that uh, uh, the ground state wave function satisfy this condition actually turn out to be equal to one for all the string loop configuration. So that's exactly what we, we want. And so there is a Hamiltonian which gave rise to this uh, uh, wave function. Okay. Then, uh, then for the second wave function, it's similar. The only thing different is that uh, this uh, after reconnection, wave function changing sign. Whenever you make a reconnection, wave function flips sign. So the different dancing rule, the very similar dancing rule, but slightly modified. And uh, then for this kind of a dancing rule, we find the wave function really given by just uh, what we have, that uh, the wave function changing sign for even number loop to odd number loop. So depend on uh, evenness or oddness of a number of loops. Okay. And uh, so, uh, uh, so from here, we actually uh, 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 have also interesting observation is that uh, uh, the first uh, string liquid where, where the equal with the superposition of all, all the loops can exist in any dimension. But however, this second one can only exist in two dimension. The reason is that in three dimension, we can see that uh, when I do the reconnection like this, because three dimension, the string can cross, okay. You know, for, for this kind of a change, 
if you observe very carefully, you see that the number of loop is now changed. <laughs> so therefore, this sign flipping is not in, it's inconsistent in three dimension. And uh, 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 so therefore, the, this, this, this sign change, this kind of dancing rule is only consistent uh, in two dimension, but in three dimension, there is a frustration. And uh, we, cannot, uh, we cannot assign wave function consistent with certain signs. But in two dimension, we can do this. Okay, so this is uh, some proposal. Yeah, we get some kind of a, a, a many body wave function. We think maybe it have a tabular order, maybe have something, uh, have a new phenomenon. A question? Yeah, please. Do you have a passive representation for such string wave function? Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, certainly uh, you can have a passive integral uh, description. Uh, but oh. however, this passive description is not a quantum field theory. Yeah, even if classical some. But, uh, but, you, you, but you can describe this uh, in terms of passive integral. So uh, basically in passive integral is really falling. Uh, uh, you, you can see, the path integral for the particle is a word line with sum over word line. And the path integral for these uh, strings are really sum over word sheet. So this basically the string is a string, it's a string theory, basically. And the maybe the only thing is that uh, here the string is very large. The string can wrap around the whole system many, many times. So it's not like we have a we have a tiny bit of string which are vibrating behavior like a particle. Here, the string is a very large string. They fill the space. And so this kind of, uh, uh, this, this kind of uh, uh, dense string phase. But yeah, in some ask... sense, uh, it's very much like a string theory. <laughs> let me ask more precisely. So one form symmetry breaking can be visualized by condensation of string field. So, yes. the, you know, some recently, some original yes. Polyakov recently back maybe, so yeah, he assumes some condensation of uniform condensation of string field, then okay, some yeah. yeah this is so, a, this is a, I, this is, yeah. this is really just a indeed a, it's just precise right. This is really condensation of string field. Yeah, we will okay. we we'll, we'll have a string field condensed. You will get this kind of a, a string liquid. And then now in the modern language, this was regarded as a, a one form symmetry breaking. Indeed, you know. Yeah, but. So, in your opinion, such a formulation would be applicable to this your string net function? Yeah. So yes and no. Okay. And uh, uh, we, we actually have a different answer sites. You know, we all think about a, a string liquid as a one spontaneous one form symmetry breaking. The one thinking about a symmetry. When thinking about a system which have a one form symmetry at the beginning to start with. Yes. But here uh, uh, we are describing a, some, some entanglement feature which are robust against any impurity, against any perturbation, against any symmetry breaking. So the feature I'm talking about actually do not require a large semitonin to have any symmetry. But certainly, once we have this laundry entanglement, you can you can you can you can reinterpret this as the emergence of one form symmetry, and this emergent one form symmetry will get spontaneously broken. So that's a kind of more modern language. But at that time, uh, we are thinking more about uh, we have some kind of many-body entanglement pattern, which is survive arbitrary uh, impurity perturbation. So the angle is, uh, uh, is, uh, is slightly different. But maybe at the end, one arrive in the modern language, one arrive this uh, emergence of a, a one form symmetry or two form symmetry. And then, uh, so then, then you can interpret this kind of string liquid as a spontaneous symmetry breaking of emergent symmetry. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But the however, but the however here, what I'm emphasizing is uh, the other stack, you know, once you have some kind of part of a language entanglement, this kind of pattern are robust against any perturbation. You don't need a symmetry. You don't need a anything. You know, as long as Hamiltonian is local, uh, this uh, pattern of a language entanglement can survive. 
which produce some kind of uh, uh, interesting uh, phenomena and the property. Yeah, so so it's a uh, uh, it's quite interesting, you know. So I'm thinking what the, the picture I'm presenting is from lattice point of view, from high energy to low energy, and this one form symmetry point of view actually from low energy uh, point of view. We we look at the low energy factor theory, which already have emerging one form symmetry, then which have a spontaneous breaking. Then then you can you get the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, this is a very good discussion. Yeah, so so there's a this phenomena really uh, nowadays obtain uh, 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 quite a several different way of understanding. Okay, so again, let's go back to this uh, this uh, very cartoon picture. So we have string liquid, and we claim that uh, uh, this string liquid have a topology order, and uh, so that means uh, we should uh, we should see Gronsky dependency say on a torus. And actually, when you have a string liquid picture, it's a, it's a kind of obvious because, uh, uh, because uh, on the torus, we have we can four sector. The string can wrap around the torus uh, in the even time, all times in the x direction or y direction. So we have four sector, even, 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 odd, odd, even, uh, odd, odd. And this, this four sector uh, do, not, uh, do not mix because uh, when when the string reconnect, they do not change evenness or oddness of string wrap around the system. So, so this, this evenness or oddness is, uh, do not change even after string reconnecting, uh, when the string reconnects. Okay. And also uh, from this picture, you can see that uh, locally, regardless whether the string wrap around the system, even time or odd times, the locally, they all look the same. <laughs> Okay, so this is kind of cartoon way to show that uh, uh, for this string liquid, for both of these two kinds of string liquid, the ground degeneracy on the torus is two. And similarly, you can see on the sphere, there's no degeneracy. On the genus Riemann surface, genus two Riemann surface, the degeneracy will be the uh, four, four square, it will be 16 and et cetera, uh, by similar arguments. Okay, so it looks like, uh, yes, uh, this kind of string liquid indeed, uh, I have this uh, 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 have a topology order. Okay, again, by cartoon picture. Uh, I think uh, 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 there's a more, uh, more precise uh, algebraic way to show this. So maybe we'll, uh, uh, in the future, I may talk about that, yeah. Uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, so is this uh, string uh, something measurable or does it have a Dynamics also. Uh, this string actually is a uh, come more around. So, so this picture actually is a is a representing this uh, the the superposition of uh, represent Guangzhou wave function. The Guangzhou wave function is a superposition of all possible uh, string strings, but it's very hard to to visualize superposition of all kind of string. So I just uh, using this animation, try to say the string uh, have quantum fluctuation. Uh, so just a, this is just a classic way to represent the superposition of all string configuration. Yeah. I see. So, so this, this is this not describing entity, quantum wave function, not uh, exactly the this thing. Yeah. Property of the wave function. Yeah, this is just a, a cartoon picture for the ground state wave function. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's not like a, a string uh, moving around. Nice. Yeah. Actually, the the picture I just present this topology order have a, a lot of parallel with the superconductivity, and uh, so so you know the topology order is defined by this microscopic property like uh, this ground state dependency, and also there's a mapping class group representation. Similarly, superconductivity also is defined by microscopic. Uh, property like a zero resistivity, the quantized viscosity, and etc. And however, but however, for superconductivity, we have another uh, a microscopic part. That is a is a mechanism for superconductivity. It's because of electron pairing. So electron pairing led to superconductivity. So that's a micro uh, uh, a microscopic. Similarly, this long range entanglement play a role of this microscopic mechanism. So this uh, long ring entanglement is a microscopic mechanism for this uh, macroscopic uh, phenomenon of topological order, which is a macroscopic uh, 
uh, ground state degeneracy. So there's a, uh, there's a uh, kind of a uh, parallel. And uh, uh, the difference is that uh, uh, in superconductor, we only have a basically very few kind of electron pairing, you know. Electron pair may be just in S wave or D wave, just a few types. But the uh, lunar entanglement have a lot more types. So actually there's uh, many, many different ways to get the lunar entanglement. So this became really a fascinating uh, topic. How many kind of lunar entanglement? Uh, how to describe them? What is the mathematics to describe a different kind of lunar entanglement? Uh, really became a modern challenge. And uh, so, 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 that, so, so that's what make this, uh, the field topology out very rich because of this lung ring entanglement can be very, very rich. And, uh, and here, I just want to make a remark. You know, nowadays, uh, topolo top topology became very popular words. But uh, in many cases, they made, made different things. Uh, for example, the topology in topological insulator really means that uh, this a single particle energy band uh, have some kind of a twist, which actually uh, corresponds, corresponds to some kind of fiber bundle on the Brunner zone. This fiber bundle is non-trivial. So this kind of topology is kind of like a classical topology, usually like a, the orange or donuts, you know, this kind of a thing. But however, I want to emphasize that uh, the topology in topology order describes something quite different. Actually, topology and topology order describe a, a pattern of a many body entanglement. So it's not like a donuts or orange. It's more like this kind of a, uh, uh, this kind of knot picture, you know. It's, it, again, it's very hard to visualize what is a, a many body entanglement, why it looks different. So I just using some kind of knot pattern uh, to, 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 to visualize this topology. And this pattern are really, robust against any local perturbation. So this is a, that's why, that's what meaning of topology is. some pattern which robust against any local perturbation. So this is meaning of topology in topology order. But it's not like a donut, not like an orange, it's something quite different. And so we need, we need a different kind of mathematics to, to describe it. So indeed uh, the mathematical foundation for many body entanglement of a topology order is uh, something so-called the tensor category theory, some kind of category theory uh, play a very important role here. And- uh, I have a uh, question. Yeah, please. Uh, oh, oh, how to understand both quantum uh, topological order and the SPT have bulk boundary con correspondence? Uh, yes, and uh, the- in, they, 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 indeed, they both have a bulk boundary. So that's been the boundary really uh, review more. You know, we know the SPD states, the, the, the bulk excitation have no, uh, have no new character, no, no fractalization, but the boundary have something. Uh, but for topology order, both the bulk excitation and the boundary reveal something. And uh, so in some sense, uh, uh, the boundary actually uh, reveals more. Uh, yeah, that's how I can only I can only say that. Yeah, you know we can probe the bulk uh, uh, organization in many ways. One can use excitation, another way using boundary excitation. But the boundary excitation, a boundary theory seems uh, is a more complete reviews more. Uh, and but but now let's just describe this bulk excitation. Yeah, yeah. Please, you have question. Yeah. So what's the origin of bulk boundary correspondence? Because I, I, I'm, there are okay. two phases, both have bulk boundary correspondence. I, I think the, I think the bulk boundary correspondence maybe is uh, more general. That is uh, the, uh, nowadays we believe that uh, for any gap space, there's a bulk boundary uh, correspondence. It's kind of topological holographic principle. And, uh, uh, but however, this, uh, these two phases are very different. For topology order, uh, there's no symmetry. So Hamiltonian have no symmetry requirement. For SPD states, the Hamiltonian have a symmetry requirement. So these two are kind of different class of problem. Yeah. And uh, certainly if you, if you remove any symmetry, then all the SPD states become trivial. 
So there's no bulk boundary relation. So the bulk boundary relation of SPD states is under the assumption of a presence of a symmetry. But however, for topological order, we do not assume any symmetry. Even without any symmetry, we have a bulk boundary relation as well. So basically that's different situation. One situation with the symmetry, another situation without symmetry. And the different situation should be discussed separately. And uh, yeah, thinking the two together may, may not be helpful. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, I, I have one question, Xiaolong. Yeah. Please. So, I mean, so where, the, where would the interior quantum hole or quantum anomalous hole state be belong to in your classification? Uh, I uh, actually belong to a uh, topology order. I see. I, I mean, so people... the reason is that, yeah, yeah there, there's a different thing. Uh, in my case, uh, I try to say that uh, the, the topology order is uh, the face of a matter that's uh, robust against any perturbation, do not require any symmetry. So indeed, the integer quantum Hall states and the trivial band insulator belong to different phase even without any uh, uh, symmetry. In a sense, uh, uh, we don't need the lattice. We don't need the band. You know, integer, this chain insulator, even without band, is still a chain insulator. It's a, uh, uh, and we don't even require, we do not even require the U1 symmetry. Electron number do not need to be conserved. Even, even when you lost U1 symmetry, you still have uh, this uh, 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 chiral edge states. So that still belong to different effects. So, 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 so that's really a uh, 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 anomalous Hall effect is different. Anomalous Hall effect probably uh, without symmetry, it became trivial. But integer quantum Hall states, uh, integer, oh, oh sorry, anomalous Hall effect, I'm uh, sorry, for quantum anomalous Hall, not, not spin Hall effect, <laughs> for quantum anomalous Hall effect and the quantum Hall states, Integer quantum Hall states, yeah, they both they both have non-trivial topology order because uh, uh, they are distinct from the product state, even without any symmetry. But in terms of excitations, uh, the so yeah, uh, in terms of excitation, we don't we we we, we do not see them. So that's again uh, echo the previous question. Hmm. Excitation do not see everything. Oh, I see. Okay. So the ground the state edge, a boundary C more, actually boundary C more. It's quite amazing, actually boundary C more. But the station C, most of them, and but the, there's a few cases they couldn't see. Then we, you have to go to the boundary. Yeah. Yeah, those are really very, very good questions. And uh, so uh, so thinking about those kind of things may help to, to develop the general theory. For this, uh, uh, for this many body entanglement. Because we know that for symmetry breaking, the group theory is the mathematic foundation for symmetry breaking. For the many body entanglement, then what is the mathematical language and the framework to describe them? You know, string liquid is just an example for a toy model, but uh, more generally, how we, how we come up with a general theory for that. And those kind of think about the boundary Thinking about excitation helps. Yeah. So actually, that's a second part of my story. Is that a think about excitation really would uh, would help us to to understand this uh, entanglement. So what is the excitation? We are interested interested in so-called topological excitation in the string liquid. The topological defect actually is the end of string because the uh, original string liquid is a loop. If we have open string, then that's like a topological defect. But you, when you have open string, it looks like you have an extended object. This is a quite extended object. But the hardware in the background of closed string, the middle part is in, locally in, in, indistinguishable from the ground state. Only the end string behave like a something. So therefore open string is not like, like an extended extension, actually it behave like a two pointed extension. Okay, so open strings behave like a particle. Then we know that uh, when you have a whole string, it's just a bunch of spin flip. So there's a, together this whole string is a boson. 
But however, this, uh, this, uh, this whole string is like a two point particle. So each point particle may be boson, maybe a fermion. So that's a left, left, left something uh, puzzle or, or something you can thinking about. Even though uh, we have a bosonic degree freedom uh, on the lattice, but under the string, maybe a fermion, who knows? Okay. So indeed, we find under string can be fermions. And uh, so here I'm using some cartoon picture. Again, there's an algebraic way, a more rigorous way to, to show this. But uh, now here, let's use some cartoon picture. And uh, so before I, I study statistics, let's consider fractional uh, angle momentum. The angle, angle momentum can be fractionalized. Okay. So, so we know that the end string is kind of, uh, kind of this kind of a straight end and has this hook and the kind of superposition for all this. That's the general that the end string looks like. Okay, let's make a, a 360 degree rotation of a single end of string. Here we say we're from straight end to the hooked end, you get hooked. But the higher, then we realize that uh, then, then we, this uh, string are allowed to fluctuate like this string can fluctuate. But then we find the hooked string and the straight hooked end and the straight end. They belong to two different sector. The local fluctuation cannot, uh, 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 cannot cha change hook into straight. They belong to different sector. But the higher the right hook after this uh, string reconnection on this little neck here can become a uh, right hook. The so left hook can become right hook. So here we can fluctuate. But then after the fluctuation, if you make another 360 rotation, then they go to become straight. So then we find that uh, the 360 degree rotation have this uh, two by two matrix. It exchange straight sector to hook the sector, have this kind of uh, uh, behavior. Okay. Then with the eigenstate of this, uh, have this uh, straight plus hook, uh, have have eigenvalue value one straight uh, minus uh, hooked have eigenvalue value minus one so that's spin zero and spin one half so this is a cartoon picture to see yeah this is uh, under string depending on different superposition they can have a spin zero or spin one half we can have a fractional angle momentum very very simply and once you have a fractional angle momentum again using this cartoon picture you can get a a fractional statistic or Fermi statistics, because uh, exchanging two two string and here uh, I, I have to be careful. This uh, keeping this straight str straight string. Okay, just exchange this two 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 so straight string. Then we can make a reconnection move here. String fluctuation can make a reconnection. You go to this configuration, and then we make another reconnection move. Then we go to this configuration. When you find that exchanging two particle, two string end, is like a doing one, a doing 360 rotation uh, for one string end. Okay. And so, so therefore, uh, so, so uh, that's why uh, angular momentum one half corresponds to uh, Fermi statistics. So actually this cartoon picture uh, is a, it's like a cartoon way to prove uh, the spin statistical theorem. Okay. So this is the amazing thing that uh, our original picture is just, just a bosonic spins. Then because of long range entanglement, we have a fermionic quasi particle emerge from the bosonic spins. So that's really a consequence of long range entanglement. Although this a string, this a string do not cost an energy, but uh, the string indeed uh, can modify statistics and uh, modify the angle momentum. So that's an example we can see that. I'm sorry, in what dimension yeah. you are working? This two dimension. And the three dimension, this picture uh, do not work. Actually in three dimension, uh, 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 things are different. Yeah, in three dimension, we don't have these two different sector. Yeah, we don't have one sector because uh, the string can, can rotate, have more room to fluctuate. So this right. is two but dimension. The, uh, in, two two dimension, dimension in two dimension, does a spin half for one make sense? Yeah, spin one half makes sense in two dimension. Actually in two dimension, uh, spin can be any 
uh, any uh, uh, fractional value do not have to be one half. Right. Okay. Uh, but however, in this particular case, a spin is quantized as one half. We don't have other value. And the end of the string, end of the string only have two spins, spin zero or spin half, no other spins. For this particular way. So what is the origin of a two-dimensional quantization of the angular momentum? Oh, that is a very, very good question. You know, from a symmetry point of view, the two-dimensional rotation is U1 symmetry. Unlimited is not quantized from symmetry point of view. But here, we are not doing symmetry, we're doing entanglement. And actually entanglement uh, led to the quantization. And the unmontium can only be some fractional value. And the, for simple entanglement pattern, we have simple fraction. For complex entanglement pattern, we have a complex fraction. And this, uh, this quantization is really coming from entanglement, not from symmetry. Mm, yeah. Thank you. Uh, indeed, this is again very, very good question. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. And uh, here, like, let me give you. I I'll also echo your question. Uh, we can see uh, another different type of quantization. Remember, we have another string liquid, where this string reconnection changes signs. Then, if string can reconnect changes signs, then our analysis is modified, because we can do a three sixty rotation. The straight became hook. But when the right hook became left hook, we need to use this string reconnection. Then there is a minor sign here. So therefore, our two by two matrix for three sixty rotation is this one minus one in the off diagonal. Have this this extra minor sign here because this string reconnection rule have a minor sign. Then the eigenvalue will be i minus i. So it means the spin is a quarter or minus quarter. So you can see that uh, it is a Different entanglement pattern led to different fractional spin. The spin cannot be arbitrary, a real number. They, they, are, they have fraction, but this fractional spin coming from entanglement. Okay. Then, then because spin this statistical theorem, uh, there's a spin quarter would mean Samyang, the statistics between both and the Fermian. So we call the Samyang statistics. And uh, so it turns out that uh, the first, this, uh, this uh, using topological excitation, we can distinguish these two spin string liquid. They really correspond to two topological order. Although from ground state degeneracy, from ground state degeneracy, we cannot distinguish them. But from excitation, we can distinguish them. Okay. And one is the Z2 topological order, and that's called a double Samian uh, topological order. And uh, uh, this is spin charge separation we talked about at the beginning for the high super diameter. It's just a special kind of a fractionalization. So I will not go into that. Yeah. And uh, for those who are interested in topological quantum field theory, uh, this Z2 topology order corresponds to Z2 gate theory uh, 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 as a topological quantum field theory. So that's why the Z2. This double Samian topology order, uh, there's a mutual transformation theory or some kind of double transformation theory. Uh, would describe uh, as a topological field for the double Samian topological order. So, excuse me. Yeah, I, I have a very naive question. So, yeah. so introduce uh, some extension of the topological order, and uh, yeah. do we have any some mathematical object which mimics the such kind of properties, like uh, uh, so Clifford algebra or something like that? Came to my mind, so I wonder whether such kind of thing exists in <laughs> mathematics. Yeah, this is a, a really, really good question. And uh, so usually we say that uh, the boson have uh, this commuting operator, commuting algebra. Fermion have under commuting operator, under commuting algebra, and something like Cliff algebra or something like that. And uh, whether this. Uh, other like a Samyang or other fractional statistics have some kind of uh, algebra, and okay. uh, yeah, it's uh, may not be that simple. You know, it's a. Uh, I think there are some kind of algebra, but uh, but much more complicated uh, than just a commuting algebra for both and under commuting algebra for Fermion. It's much more complicated than mm. that. So so that's led to what I just mentioned. This is some kind of tensor category theory. Or some kind of a fancier algebra, 
I, uh, so now, now there's some paper discussing this, uh, this uh, net, net operator algebra. You know, in conformal field theory, there's conformal net. This net algebra probably is a uh, more proper uh, to capture this kind of uh, 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 more general mm -hmm. fraction of physics and uh, non, even non-beating statistics. Yeah, you need uh, something like that. So, so this kind of generalization uh, from the mathematical point of view really is uh, one from the uh, conformal net is uh, maybe one direction. Another related direction is the tensor category theory. Uh, so this is really the mathematical framework uh, for this. So basically that really says that uh, by studying topological extension, we find a very rich structure. And the thinking about which mathematics capture this rich structure mm. would give us some hint. What is the mathematical foundation uh, for this many body entanglement? Just like in the symmetry breaking, we know have a, a lot of pattern and the transformation environments, this pattern are environment under certain transformation that's led to group theory, understanding for symmetry breaking pattern. And it is this uh, uh, fraction statistics and uh, their uh, uh, this kind of braiding and their fusion uh, this kind of uh, uh, mathematical uh, phenomena, uh, which may lead to this uh, mathematical formalism uh, mm -hmm. to describe this kind of many body entanglement. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, so now let's go to the last topic. So, so we see that uh, this uh, topological station can be very special. They can have a fractional quantum number, like a fractional angulantium. They can even have a fractional statistics. So now I want to argue that even the degree freedom can be fractionalized. So what is degree freedom? Like a spin one half, have a spin up, spin down. That's a two degree freedom. But this degree freedom can be fractionalized. So that sometimes uh, this topological extension may have a degree freedom which is not integer. So like a, it's a Herbert space have a non-integer dimension, something very strange. And that even that is possible. And to, to, to reveal that possibility, we need to consider a more complicated string liquid. We call the string net liquid. You know, originally uh, in two examples before, we only have a string only from loops. Uh, string do not allow to join and do not allow to, to end. And here we still do not allow string to end. So, but here we, do, we allow string to join, uh, like, like this, this, uh, this, this branching, have this branching structure. So we can think about this, uh, 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 this kind of string liquid. Uh, they can fluctuate uh, freely and, uh, uh, of, the, uh, of this kind of string liquid. But the hard the dancing rule is more complicated in order for this fluctuation to be consistent. Uh, first, uh, the string can change its shape arbitrarily. The wave function do not change its amplitude. But however, when string reconnect, like uh, from here to here, that's a previous string reconnection from horizontal to vertical, we say they are the same. But uh, here we have another configuration. The string may be connected like this a Y shape or H shape. And uh, so in general, the more general, more general reconnection rule is like this. We have a string, three configuration are related. So then there's a, there's a non-trivial non coefficient. It turns out that uh, uh, these coefficients are highly constrained in order for the, for the string wave function to be consistent. It turns out it sh should have this form and this uh, phi is a golden ratio. Okay, so this really gave rise to uh, this string net liquid. It turns out that the end of the string in string net liquid have a non statistics and also have a fractionalized degree freedom. So usually people say non statistics coming from the braiding is not the face, it's a matrix. But the here I want to emphasize that uh, non-abelian statistics is more about the degree of freedom get fractionalized. Uh, this particle carry fractionalized degree of freedom. And this is the more dominant phenomena, uh, more dominant physical property for non-abelian statistics. Okay, so, so let's, uh, let's say, what is the internal degree of freedom for under string? Okay. So to determine internal degree of freedom, what we do, uh, we just uh, fix location of uh, excitation. And then to see 
do we have a remaining ground state degeneracy? We have a remaining degeneracy that reflect internal degree uh, freedom. So let's consider we have a string net liquid on a sphere, okay? And we fix location of and string. We have a, we, suppose we have a full, full string and we fix their location, okay? Then we ask uh, how many states are there? How many locally indistinguishable states are there? And uh, very naively we may say four because we can string can connect this way or horizontally or with a with a with a with a with a bridge in between and etc. So maybe we have a four. It turns out that this picture is too naive, and uh, it turns out that uh, if you include all the possible string fluctuations, there are only two linearly independent states uh, for four four string. For four string and yeah, there are only two linearly independent states, and this this uh, this result is obtained from this uh, fusion rule for and string. So you know, let's using the phi to describe the and string. If you put a phi and phi together, the phi phi have this uh, fusion rule. Phi times phi equal to one plus phi. <laughs> okay, here one represents a trivial extension. And the phi represent the non-trivial extension. Non-trivial means the end of string. The trivial extension is just like a like a, a local spin flip, not end of string. Some trivial extension. So this a fusion rule. We we, we know that this a phi times phi means a, the bound state of a two phi particle. That's physical uh, understanding. But what is a one plus phi means? So that's a, a, a we need to explain what a one plus phi really means. So somehow. Mathematicians understand this. Somehow physicists kind of miss this. Uh, so, so actually we, we kind of know, know this one plus means falling. So let's consider uh, two spin one half particle. And uh, if you view this two spin one half part particle as a one particle, we view it from very far away. We view this two spin one half as a single particle. Then we say, what are they? What is this part? What is this particle? It turns out that uh, this uh, from far away, this single particle may have a spin zero, may have a spin one. So actually, they are kind of a direct sum, direct sum of spin zero and spin one. You know, that means that uh, uh, this uh, this bound state for two spin one half particle can be viewed as accidental degeneracy of a spin zero particle and a spin one particle. They have accidentally degenerate, accidentally have same energy. So therefore it's like a zero plus one. So total number of state is a one plus three equal to two times two. Yeah, so that is a, that's a sum really means. So therefore this direct sum in mathematics correspond to accidental degeneracy of excitation in physics. Okay, so so after explaining the fusion rule, so now I can explain uh, uh, where why why we have this kind of fusion rule. Why bound state two phi give us a one and a phi? Actually, from the string uh, net uh, configuration, we can see that uh, kind of easily. You know, we have a two uh, two end of string, and this uh, you may have. You may these two and string may uh, this may be connect one string with no with no string coming out of it, so that's like uh, this two string and after fusion became became trivial extension. Okay. However, because we also allow this uh, this uh, branching is also allowed the configuration in string that ground state, so therefore this is two phi fused together, also have a possibility that it became a single phi. So therefore fusion of two phi have two possibilities, either have nothing or become single phi. So that's the light to this kind of a fusion rule. And using this fusion rule, we can construct the other fusion rule. For example, the fusion of three phi together, you can fuse the first two phi, become one and a phi. And then fuse the second phi with, a, with a, this a direct sum. Then fusing this one with a phi, we just get a phi. Fusion phi with the phi, we get a one and a phi. So we get a one and a two phi. Okay. So there's some kind of a mathematics uh, of a fusion rule. And similarly, you can do this uh, a fusion four phi gave us a, 
two one and three five and etc. So those are uh, so this is a, a kind of a how we do the fusion rule. Question. Yes. How, how can you assign the fusion rule? So in a sense, uh, issue from the string net because in the string net uh, uh, we allow two string to uh, to to become nothing, you know. Uh, so in this case, uh, the two string, uh, yeah, that's another picture. Sorry. Here, this uh, uh, this uh, this two string is a uh, is a uh, 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 you can see these two string when they fuse, they 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 they, they became nothing. But here, the two string when they fuse, they become another string, and this single string can have another end. So this this these two picture gave rise to 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 this. Yeah, this unfortunately this is a cartoon picture, and uh, there's a more rigorous uh, uh, mathematical description. And, so uh, yeah, uh, which, I yeah. I missed uh, previously you mentioned that some consistency condition, the wave function should satisfy determines some coefficient of the wave function. Also, yes. is, is this fusion rule also determined by that? So what what is the consistency condition? Sorry, I have to ask yeah. before, but. And, uh, no, no, yeah, this is a very, very good question. You know, because this is kind of colloquium talk, I try to restrict I myself see. using cartoon to explain some physical concepts, concepts, not using mathematics. And here I have trouble. Actually, this part is a, is a, is a more subtle thing. So my cartoon do not really work. <laughs> but, I see, it's okay, yeah. I will check, but, check uh, it out. But, okay. but, but from the wave function, uh, uh, this uh, coefficient uh, it's matters that, this coefficient can be complex number, and they have some non-trivial complex number. They matters. So they, uh, but however, uh, for the fusion rule, for the fusion rule, maybe, 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 yeah. Let me see. I don't know how to deselect this. This uh, somehow I select this uh, picture. Anyway, so. Uh, from the future, we, we know that this uh, uh, this is spin zero and spin one as a as a sum, they are just a just a component of Hilbert space. You know, this one dimensional space direct sum with a three dimensional vector space. So so these uh, those coefficients are all integers. It's just a uh, how many you can view this you reduce representation. So we have a one one dimensional reducible representation and a one three dimensional reducible representation, and so those are coefficients are integers, they are quantized. So so that's led to this uh, this uh, fusion rule. This uh, uh, you know when two things a uh, uh, tensor product or two representation give rise to direct sum of uh, two other representation. So actually this uh, fusion rule of a, of a particle can be you can imagine this end of string secretly secretly is some kind of reputation, some abstract reputation. Uh, there are tensor products that give rise to the direct sum, <laughs> uh, but the, the coefficient will be integer. But yeah, indeed this part uh, is, uh, is uh, more difficult to, uh, to understand using this cartoon picture, yeah. I see, okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, but the meaning is that, for example, the fusion, the bound state of four or five particle Correspond to accidental dependency of a two trivial particle and a three five particle, so they are direct sum of you do for representations, you know. So this direct sum is indeed a, is a yeah. Uh, usually in physics we don't talk about this too much, yeah. But actually they are mathematical possibility. We should talk talk about them. Okay. And. Uh, and this fusion rule can allow us to compute the ground state degeneracy. Okay. So so let's uh, uh, let's let's say that uh, uh, to see the ground state is is for let's consider ground state on the on the sphere. Okay. So on the sphere, a trivial particle is allowed. We can always uh, flip a spin so that trivial excitation so that's always allowed. So so the trivial particle is allowed. Okay, but however, one five particle is not allowed on a sphere. 
because of phi particle is end of string, we cannot have a single end of string on the sphere. So that's never allowed. So therefore the, the state with a one phi particle is not allowed means I have a zero dimension. Okay. And uh, so the, the two phi particle is allowed just like uh, this one. So two phi particles allowed. And the three phi particles also allowed. You know, that's a, that's a picture I have. This, well, on the sphere, we have two phi particle where well, they can connect by one string. So this is allowed the configuration. We have a three phi particle, then you have this, uh, uh, this is also allowed configuration. Okay. But however, this allowed or not allowed can be understood from the fusion rule. Uh, like uh, the single phi particle can be viewed as a zero one plus one phi. Okay. So we have a zero one, no, no one. No one means not allowed. Okay. So means the ground theory is equal to zero. Zero means not allowed. Okay. However, we have a two phi particle. When two phi fuse together, we got a trivial particle one and a phi. So this one can almost view as ground state. We can do one, one, one. So therefore, there's a one allowed state on the sphere. So ground theory is a one. We have a three phi particle fused together. We get a one one and a two five. Okay. So uh, again, we have one one means only one allowed state. The ground state is the one. We have four five particle fused together. Then we have something interesting. We get a two one and a three five. The five is not allowed. So on the sphere, we just get rid of the five. But we have two one. So that means uh, there's a two allowed states. So ground, ground state is two. So this is again the cartoon picture to explain. Using fusion rules, we can compute the ground state ground state or the, the, the allowed states with a with a, a, a few particle on the sphere. So when we have four particles on the sphere, we have a two allowed state. We have a degeneracy two of the ground state. Then finally, we can we can using this to understand that this uh, uh, the fractional statistics a uh, fractional uh, uh, degree freedom. You know, uh, so let's assume we have a we have n particle on a sphere, and uh, there is a the dn is a number for locally indistinguishable states for n particle uh, on the sphere. Okay, then what is internal degree freedom? You know, roughly speaking, uh, this uh, internal degree freedom is a d. So this dn roughly should be d to the nth power gave us a dn. So therefore, this dn to the one over n's power should give us internal degree freedom d. So this is how we define internal degree freedom d, which we call the quantum dimension. And because they are defined in the limit n go to infinity limit of this quantity, oh. so from here, from this definition, we can see that this d may not be integer. Sometimes it can be non-integer. So this is the way uh, to define this uh, fractionalized. Uh, uh, degree freedom. Okay, so to compute the quantum dimension for our string net uh, uh, extension, uh, we just need to compute what is dn. From dn, dn really this. We have n particle fused together. They produce a dn one and fn phi. You know, the, a bunch of one is a dn. Number of one is dn. Number of five is fn. Okay. Then we can compute this dn uh, uh, recursively. So we just uh, fuse the uh, n particle with additional particle. You get n plus one particle fusion together. Okay, so this uh, this uh, uh, so this uh, this uh, five particle uh, this uh, five particle would fuse with uh, this kind of combination. Okay, so so when the five particle fuse with uh, this uh, fn a uh, five particle. So each five with a five fusion produce a one. So therefore we have Fn five will produce Fn one. Okay. But when five particle fuse with Fn five, it's also produce Fn five. But when five particle fuse with one, one fuse with five also gave us five. Okay. So, so therefore total number five is become F plus Fn plus Dn. And so therefore we get the recursive relation. This is a dn plus one equal to fn and fn plus one equal to fn plus dn. So that means uh, 
the Fn plus one equal to Fn plus Fn minus one. So therefore this Fn is actually, it's a Fibonacci number. Okay. And uh, so therefore a symptomatic, a symptomatic behavior of Fibonacci number is known. And from here, we find this, uh, this quantity dimension is a one plus square root five over two. It's a golden ratio. Yeah. Okay. So this is a, a, a this is kind of a simplest example. Uh, we can have this uh, a fractionalized uh, a quantum dimension. So therefore, uh, this end of string. Uh, uh, so physically, what happened really is that uh, when you have a you on a sphere, when you have a, a few uh, particle, even when you fix the lo their location, and uh, we still have a locally indistinguishable uh, wave function. And we still have a ground state degeneracy, the topological degeneracy, which are robust against any perturbation. Okay. And we can, we can attribute this uh, topological degeneracy in the presence of end of string as internal degree freedom for each end of string. But in this case, uh, the internal degree freedom for each end of string may not be integer. So that's a, uh, uh, but it's kind of have some number, it's called a quantum dimension. Okay. And this, uh, because this uh, degeneracy uh, from this, uh, uh, from this, uh, 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 from this uh, configuration is a uh, topology robust. So this degeneracy is robust against any local perturbation. And uh, so therefore we can use this degeneracy as a qubits uh, to do quantum com uh, computation. Uh, for example, uh, for this uh, four particle, we have a two-fold degeneracy. So they have a single qubit. However, if you braid this uh, uh, end of string, if you braid them, and then you perform this um, rotation of this uh, on this two-dimensional vector space, we, we, that's kind of, so braiding of uh, uh, this uh, non-abelian particle, like uh, doing this uh, uh, quantum gate, uh, gate operation. And turns out that uh, for, this, uh, for this particular Fibonacci anion, the computation universal, uh, universal means the following. We have a n, we have n and a string. Uh, you have pretty high dimensional vector space. However, by doing all different pattern for braiding, different different order of braiding, you can produce arbitrary unitary matrix on this uh, uh, on this uh, high dimensional uh, vector space. So therefore, uh, so therefore braiding is uh, pretty powerful. You can produce arbitrary unitary matrix that they can perform so called universal quantum computation. And uh, so in some sense, uh, uh, this uh, topology order is, uh, is like a, it's a, it's a natural medium for topological quantum computation. It's kind of like a silicon for CPU today. Uh, so, so, so if you find some material with topology order and with not being statistics, then this kind of material probably become a natural thing, uh, natural material to do uh, quantum computation. So that will be the, the picture uh, 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 for this idea. And that's all the, that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for very exciting and stimulating talk. Uh, we have uh, received already many, many questions and answer, but now the session is open for questions. Please, question from audience. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh... Sure. Ungo, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so the uh, so you explain this uh, topological orders in gap to state, uh, and I think probably the uh, next level one of the next next level question would be the uh, how to characterize uh, entang long range entanglement uh, of gaseous system like a non Fermi liquid. Uh, is there any progress or uh, some interesting directions? Uh, can you tell us? Uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for this. I think uh, uh, the next month I'm, I'm going to visit uh, South Korea and probably I, uh, that will be the, my main uh, topic. Excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, the, so, you know, I've been studying topology order for the last uh, uh, 30 years and maybe that's for too long. So I'm thinking I should graduate <laughs> to go to next level and doing something gapless. The gapless is uh, much more complicated. And uh, right now we understand a lot of gapless system, but uh, in many case, 
we understood them because uh, they are non-interacting, or at least they, they can be thought as non-interacting. There's a few exceptions like conformal field theory, some, some algebra, you know. And, uh, but that's only works in one plus one dimension. So we are dying to know, do we have a very systematic general picture for higher dimension uh, gapless system? Okay. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's, this is a question we don't know where to start. You know, it's, you know, certainly we know this is an important question. We are dying to get answer, but we don't know where to start. Actually, the situation is very similar to 30 years ago when you're facing gap the system, you know. We are facing quantum Hall states. We know there's something in quantum Hall states. And we even have a lovely wave function. But uh, as a general, you know, as general, we say what kind of order, what kind of pattern in this strongly correlated, correlated system which gave rise to quantum Hall states. We don't know where to start, but uh, but I do have a picture at that time. That is uh, the quantum Hall state is like a, a porridge, you know, it's a, it's a random, there's nothing in there, you know. So at that time, when I think about the quantum Hall states, I say it's, it's an electron liquid, it's a nothing. It's very different from crystal. But however, after those uh, so many years of study, now when I think about the quantum Hall state, I think about topology of states, I think, oh, they are very similar to crystal, have a lot of uh, structure, and we know how to describe those uh, structures. And now when I look at the uh, gapless states, we have similar thing. It's something there, but we don't know what's in there. It's something very vague. And uh, then we wish we have uh, some way to capture those some unknown structure. It turns out that recently there's maybe some breakthrough that is a uh, uh, that's also something we talk about this uh, boundary bulk relation. And uh, looks like uh, as at least one of time, I'm not sure it's going to work, but at least that's uh, the first thing I try is that uh, I'm going to try at this stage is that uh, I view every gapless state as a boundary of a, a topology order, boundary of gap states. And the hoping this way we can get some handle of internal structure of gapless states. So, so the proposal so far is that the, the internal structure of gapless states can be captured by one dimensional higher bulk, which mm. is gap. Mm. Mm. And uh, this may not be true. Maybe one may say there's maybe many, many counter examples of that. Mm. But at the moment, uh, I don't have anything to start with as a general picture. So let's just uh, go with it and to see how far I can go. I I if, uh, if, uh, if uh, you see some, some, something wrong, then try to fix it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but indeed, uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, I think it's uh, uh, maybe a major direction of mm -hmm. interest, yeah. Okay, yeah. excellent. Uh, any other question? Hello, I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. The piece one, uh, piece one, I have uh, two questions. The first, uh, I want to understand the definitions of the short range and the long range entanglement. I, I speculate you use the uh, local unitary, unitary transformation to define the short range entanglement. Could we say that long range one is relevant to a non local transformation? Uh, no. Uh, so called the local unitary transformation, which I did not discuss here, maybe. Maybe later we can discuss in the in the in the future lecture. And uh, local Sorry. unitary local unit transformation define the equivalent class of a many body between many body states. Mm -hmm. If two many body states are connected by so called local unitary transformation, yes, we say they are equivalent. Yes. So this is just a more quantum information way to say these two many body states belong to the same phase. <laughs> And uh, so the, uh, so so therefore, uh, using local unitary transformation to define equivalence class, to define equivalence relation, then the resulting equivalence class 
is a top law order. Okay. So, so this is really the long range entanglement. So long range entanglement is a non trivial class under this low unitary transformation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so therefore, so therefore, the top law order and the low unitary transformation are very closely related. Okay, let me ask another a question. Uh, we know that we can always uh, rewrite the Fermion field theory in the quick basis. The transformation is non local. Then, what is the entanglement there? Oh, could you say that again? You, you okay. put the Fermion, what the Fermion gas? We can yeah. always use the non local transformation to rewrite the Fermion theory in the quick basis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Then, what is entanglement? Uh, So let, let me put it this way. Uh, usually, when you have a, a Fermion system mm -hmm. with local Hamiltonian, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What is it? Well, what I try to say is that the local Hamiltonian for Fermion system is non-local. As just as you said, when writing this Fermion system in terms of qubits, we yeah. actually have a non-local Hamiltonian. So when you say non-local Hamiltonian, do you mean the basis for the space time or the basis in the qubit? Only in basis for qubits. Okay. For the for the qubit the basis, the, the Fermion Hamiltonian in terms of the qubit is non-local Hamiltonian. Okay. So in some sense they are not allowed. So when I consider the bosonic system, so so in this talk, I talk about only bosonic topology, that means topology from qubits. Yes. So the so the very important assumption is that all the Hamiltonian for the qubits are local Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this uh, this uh, Fermion so-called local Fermion Hamiltonian is forbidden from the qubits point of view. So we don't even consider them. Mm -hmm. But however, your question is a uh, is a uh, is a very valid question. We can redefine localness. There's a Fermionic localness. And then using Fermionic localness to re-examine all the things I talk about today. Mm -hmm. So that is a different direction, about a parallel uh, thing. So today I only talk about the bosonic topology order. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine there's a, another version of a theory I'm describing here. Mm -hmm. It's called the Fermionic topology order. They're coming from this uh, so-called local Fermionic Hamiltonian. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's similar theory. Then there's similar classification, so that's that's indeed a very interesting question. Uh, you know, uh, there's a two version of topology order theory. One is a bosonic version, one another is Fermionic version. Okay, let me ask. Uh, and, and the definition of entanglement are different. So, so I don't mix the two. I do not mix the two. Okay. Yeah. So I I just confuse one thing. Well, usually can use the fermion to control the bosonic state because fermion spin is. A, is a half fundamental fermion is a spin is one half or electron. Okay, electron spin is one half, but the bosonic spin is an integer. So yeah. in some sense, I will think that we can we can use the fermions entanglement to control the bosonic entanglement. Yeah. Again, this is again very very good question. And uh, so, but but however, in this question, the context changes. Now here you're talking about the uh, excitation. Mm -hmm. Even for the bosonic qubit model, it can kind of have a fermionic excitation. Uh -huh. Okay. But however, in many physical systems, we seem to feel that if we know the excitation, we also know the fundamental lattice theory, mm -hmm. uh, which is usually true for the trivial phase. <laughs> Indeed, for the trivial phase, excitation and the lattice degree freedom are closely tied. But for topology order for long range entanglement, that that's not true. The excitation and the fundamental lattice degree freedom are kind of can be very different, and uh, so so they are not they do not have a close connection. So even when you have a when you know some state of matter have fermionic excitation or or, or anion excitation, then using anion to describe a, the original lattice system can be challenging, you know. Mm. Uh, so, so, so that is a, uh, uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's kind of different problem. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, any yeah, other? One, one more question. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. So, I, I think you have 
I mean, I mean, you have not touched upon this question about the effect of thermal fluctuation on topological order. And I'm just wondering like whether we can make a general classification of what features of topological order is more or less susceptible to thermal fluctuation. Like if you compare like, like comparison between edge excitation and the bulk excitation. Yeah. Okay, so this is a very, very good question. Okay. And uh, 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 thermal excitation actually is uh, it's about excitation. Okay. And uh, the uh, usually the, today we talk about a point like excitation, like end of string or point like. Okay. And uh, the point like excitation is not robust against a thermal. Uh, thermal uh, fluctuation or uh, final temperature. We have a final temperature, you immediately have a final density of a point like excitation. And the final density excitation, you know, immediately destroy top large order because there's a length scale. The, the average separation between excitation defines some length scale. Beyond that length scale, top large order disappeared. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, there are topology order which do not allow any point like excitation. It ha have only string excitation. There are topology order. And then when you have topology order with only string excitation, then the small string excitation do not do anything. The small loop is like trivial excitation. The, it is a string which wrap around the whole system can destroy topology order. For, for this kind of topology order with a string station. But the string wrap around the whole system require a lot of uh, energy to excite. So in this case, for the string only topology order, and uh, there is a thermal phase transition, below certain temperature, topology order remain well-defined. Only above certain order, certain temperature, topology order became destroyed. I, I forgot in string theory, this temperature have a name. I forgot what's the name. You know, when the string get a, a proliferating and- uh, Hagedong uh, temperature, Hagedong temperature. I see, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, uh, so, so they, they're similar thing. So, so actually we have a topology order which allow, which survive finite temperature. But unfortunately this topology only exists in four spatial dimension. Yeah, we, 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 we live in three dimensions. It's hard to overcome that. Yeah. And uh, so, so people are thinking about some other means to see whether you can construct string only topology order. In that case, you may have, a, you may have something immune to final temperature, uh, which is very important for application. Yeah. OK, thank you very much. OK, I think it's time to wrap up. Uh, but let me take the privilege as a chairperson to ask my own uh, stupid question. Uh, so Xiaogang, when you count to ground state de degeneracy, you count to number of possible uh, one state, trivial one state. Yes, yes. My understanding when I look at the picture, this trivial one state is just nothing, no particle. Yes. So then how can you count to number of nothing? Yeah, so in, yeah, you're totally right. Okay, yeah. and uh, so you can see that uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, something more, more detailed about this, uh, what is the extension? Right. Uh, okay, let me see this picture. So yeah. you can see this, uh, uh, and, okay. So this extension uh, and the string, Right. It's an extension. It has falling property. Right. We apply any local operator to it. You don't de do not. You cannot destroy it. Mm -hmm. So so that's that's like equivalent class. So any two thing connected mm -hmm. by local operator are regarded as equivalent. So two and phi, other, two phi two, disappeared, isn't no, it? No, two phi disappeared. But however, a single phi. Uh -huh. Single phi, when you apply local operator near phi, you can right. never destroy a single phi. That's correct, yes. So that's a, so here we are again talking about the equivalence relation. Uh -huh. But the equivalent relation is a kind of local one. We have a, if a two state 
are connected by local operator with say, these two states correspond to the same type of excitation. I see, I see. Now so, you can, from, from this point of view, you can see that in the, starting with ground state, we have a single spin flip. Mm -hmm. A definition of single flip, spin flip can flip back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So spin flip is always uh, connect to nothing, no excitation. So wow. they are trivial excitation. So that's one means this kind of uh, excitation connecting to nothing. I see. But so, the under string never connect to nothing uh, by, uh -huh. by local excitation. I see. And uh, so that's really defined the type of a topological extension. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so when, so when you have this fusion rule, when two phi fuse together, we say we have a one phi, we have a one one. This right. one can be viewed as a trivial extension. This one can also be viewed as ground state itself. It's nothing. Uh -huh. And so that's why we have a two one that's made correspond to two, two degenerate ground states. Uh -huh. All right, thank you very much.